Welcome back to Psychology of the Unknown, where we dive into the realm of the dark, sadistic, and evil. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're feeling freaky, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of the Chicago Ripper crew. But first, I want to tell you about the book I wrote, Jack the Ripper, The Man Behind the Blade. It's my first true crime book, and I'm pretty proud of it. In the book, I take you on a journey through the world of psychology, sociology, criminology, victimology, forensics, profiling, and history to show you what led to a seemingly innocent childlike man becoming the Ripper of Whitechapel. The suspect I came up with has never before been explored by any other researcher. So if you're into true crime, history, psychology, and Jack the Ripper, then follow the link in the description to buy a copy of my book on Amazon. Now without further ado, I give you the Chicago Ripper Crew. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. Last Kenny 911, what is your emergency? Thank you. Caller, what's the address? On May 23, 1981, 28-year-old Linda Sutton was abducted. Her body was later found mutilated with her left breast being amputated in Villa Park, Illinois. On May 15, 1982, Lorraine Borowski was abducted as she was about to open the realtor's office where she worked. Her body was later found in Clarendon Hills Cemetery five months later. Shuey Mack was the next victim to be abducted from Hanover Park and her body was found four months later. Two weeks after Shuey Mack was abducted, Angel York was taken. According to York, a group of men had picked her up in their van, handcuffed her, and then slashed her breasts before throwing her from the van still alive. On August 28, 1982, Sandra Delaware's body was discovered on the bank of the Chicago River, stabbed, strangled, and with her left breast removed. Then on September 8, 31-year-old Rose Davis was found in an alley her injuries were identical to Sandra's. Beverly Washington was found near a railroad track on December 6th. Her body sustained several injuries, including her breast having been amputated and the other severely slashed. Though she was in horrible shape, she managed to survive and gave police descriptions of her attackers as well as their van. The first to be arrested was Robin Gett. However, the police were forced to release him due to lack of evidence. The police continued their investigation, however, and learned that Gett and three friends had rented adjoining rooms in a hotel in 1981. The three friends were Edward Spritzer and the Cocorales brothers. The police then brought the men in for questioning, and Thomas Cocorales confessed to the crimes, and that all four men were responsible. In a statement by Edward, the men would take the women to Geck's place, which they referred to as a satanic chapel, where they raped, tortured, and amputated the breasts of the women with wired garrotes, Cocorales said that they would eat parts of the severed breasts as sacrament and Gek would masturbate into the breasts before placing them in a box. Eventually, both Cocorales brothers and Ed Spricer confessed to their parts in the crimes. However, Robin Gek continued to proclaim his innocence and protested the charges. After a series of trials, Thomas was convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison due to his confession. However, that sentence was later commuted and he was scheduled to be released on September 30th, 2017, but his parole was denied. Then he came up for parole again and was released on March 29th, 2019. Geck is currently serving a 120 year sentence in the Menard Correctional Center for his crimes and won't be eligible for parole until 2042. Andrew was sentenced to death, which was then carried out by lethal injection on March 17th, 1999. Spretzer was also sentenced to death However, his sentence was part of a last-minute commutation of all death sentences by then-corrupt Governor George H. Ryan in 2003. Thomas currently lives at Wayside Cross Ministries in Aurora, Illinois. It should be noted that the crew now known as the Chicago Rippers once worked with infamous Chicagoland serial killer John Wayne Gacy as part of his construction crew. During the time of the murders, Gick took the leadership role due to his age, as he was 30 when they began their crimes, while Spritzer was 21 and the Crocorales brothers were only teenagers. To this day, Gick denies any involvement in the murders of the women, only that he participated in the rape, torture, and mutilation. He was also never officially charged in the murders either, which puts him in a similar position as Charles Manson. So there you have it, the story of the Chicago Ripper crew. 
Had you ever heard of them before this video? What are your thoughts? Leave a comment below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.